Do you believe that you have a guardian angel watching over you? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. You know, we hear a lot about angels this time of year. Many people believe that angels surround us every day. And one woman in North Carolina believes that an angel saved her daughter's life. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Angels have been a part of the wonder of the season since the very first Christmas. Very good. Uh, this year, that wonder is real for Colleen Banton. We've been praying for a miracle. 15 years ago on Christmas Day, Colleen's daughter Chelsea was born five weeks premature. All her life, she had been plagued with chronic health problems. And this past September, a severe bout of pneumonia almost took her life. Chelsea was put on a ventilator for nearly two months. And when doctors told Colleen that there was little more they could do, she made the heartbreaking decision to take Chelsea off life support. Then something strange happened this light appeared. It was a flare of light on a television monitor outside Chelsea's room. I said, oh, wow, that's an angel. Colleen managed to capture this photograph. Moments later, doctors came with good news. Chelsea's condition had miraculously improved. Doctors and nurses were amazed. And this Christmas day, Chelsea is back home, able to celebrate her 15th Thank birthday. You. Thanks, her mom says, to a guardian angel. I don't think I would have brought Chelsea home from the hospital if the angel had not appeared. Well, we're joined by Edward Grinnan. He's the editor-in-chief of Guidepost and Inspirational Magazine. Edward, good morning to you. Nice to be with you, Debbie. You know, it's a wonderful story, but there are many people that might doubt that that bright light in that picture is actually an angel. Is it likely that, or, or how uh, popular is it that people believe in angels? Well, surveys show that about 70% of the American population believe in angels, and about half of those people have claimed to see an angel in some form or another. Now, the clip we just looked at, I mean, conceivably, it could be some sort of explainable empirical phenomenon. But I think what really proves an angel's appearance is the effect it has on the people who see that angel or encounter that angel in some way. Mm -hmm. We found from our readers that angels change people's lives. I mean, they're never quite the same after they see one. And I think that's really what distinguishes it from something explainable. Now, the people that do believe in angels, is, is it typically someone that has a, a faith belief of some sort and that's why they believe in angels? Well, certainly uh, among our readers, um, uh, a strong faith usually is a prerequisite for, for a belief in angels and certainly an encounter in angels. But I don't think it's, uh, it's strictly limited to, to religious belief. I, th I think people who believe in a higher power or believe that, the, that God works in the world uh, believe that they can encounter angels. We were talking earlier, you make a good point, that you know angels come in many different forms. It's not just necessarily a bright light on a picture. I would say that most of the stories that we hear from our readers are not necessarily full-fledged um, visions of angelic winged beings. Sometimes it, it could be something like... A, a breeze that comes through a window and turns the page of a book to the words that you needed to see at just that point in your life. It can be a stranger in the subway who looks at you like your makeup artist was telling me today during a very difficult time in her life. A complete stranger just looked up at her and said, it's going to be all right. Oh, yeah. And then he disappeared. And then you feel better. Edward Grinnan, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was nice being here today. Great. Today's alternative first readings talk about angels, very appropriate, as today is the feast of Saints Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, Archangels. Archangels are just special angels that have been given specific extra powers and roles by God. Alex Britton is a convert to Catholicism. He was raised a fundamentalist anti-Catholic evangelical Protestant by his mother and grew up in various evangelical Christian traditions during his time growing up in foster care. He loved the Bible, taught Sunday school, and was a preacher from a very young age. However, when Alex studied history in college, he was exposed to the real historic roots of the faith that he loved. After more years of study and prayer, he was received into the Catholic Church during the Easter Vigil of 2011. He has researched extensively about angels. I give you excerpts from his work based upon what we know from Scripture, from Tobit, Revelation, and Isaiah, the Church has determined that there are seven archangels. Under the Council of Rome in 745, within the reign of Pope St. Zachary, the Catholic Church officially only acknowledges the names of three of the seven archangels, St. Michael, St. Gabriel, and St. Raphael. 
Although the Church acknowledges that there are seven archangels according to sacred scripture and sacred tradition, because these three archangels are the only angels named in scripture, they are currently the only three who are officially recognized by name in Catholic doctrine. The names of the other four archangels appear in Jewish and Christian sources outside of the canon of sacred scripture. An example is the book of Enoch, chapter 20, and their names are Uriel, Raquel, Zerachiel, and Remiel. Michael means, who is like God, patron of soldiers, police officers, and firefighters, and guardian angel of the Catholic Church. He is also the famous angel who led the forces of heaven in casting out Lucifer, Satan, when he rebelled against God. Pope Leo XIII composed this famous, often repeated prayer in the late 19th century, which we shall pray at the end of this vlog. Gabriel means, God is my strength. He appeared to the following, the prophet Daniel, to explain a vision from God, to the priest Zacharias, to announce that he would have a son, John the Baptist, who would be the forerunner of the Messiah, Jesus, and to the Virgin Mary in the Annunciation. Raphael means healing power of God. Raphael played a pivotal role in the book of Tobit, a book removed from the biblical canon in Protestantism, as he helped Tobias, the son of Tobit, on his journey. Traditionally, due to the meaning of his name, he is revered as the Archangel of Healing. Due to this, he might be alluded to in John chapter 5, verses 2-4, to which are passages not included in all Bibles. You may look him up in the NSRVCE version. All of us have guardian angels. According to paragraph 336 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, from its beginning until death, human life is surrounded by their watchful care and intercession. Beside each believer stands an angel as protector and shepherd leading him to life. Already here on earth, the Christian life shares by faith in the blessed company of angels and men united in God. Psalm 91 and Matthew 18 are its scriptural basis. You may look up other passages in the Bible in Tobit and Revelation to show that our angels are interceding for us. Let us pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.